As a candidate in 2015, Donald Trump infamously said, We're going to make America great again. We're going to use our best people. So we're going to get the best people. But we're going to use our best people. We're going to deliver. We're going to get the best people in the world. But the cabinet, we're going to have all the best people. We're going to find out who they are. Well, let's check in on how that's going, shall we? Trump's national security advisor, Michael Flynn, pleaded guilty in 2017 to lying to the FBI about his conversations with then Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. He will be sentenced in December. Trump's campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was sentenced to seven and a half years in August 2019 for a multitude of financial crimes and for lying to prosecutors in breach of his cooperation agreement. Manafort is now in prison. Trump's deputy inauguration chairman, Rick Gates, pleaded guilty in 2018 to lying to investigators and conspiring to commit other offenses. He agreed to cooperate with Mueller's investigation in order to reduce the maximum 10-year sentence he faced. He will be sentenced in December. Trump's campaign foreign policy advisor, George Papadopoulos, was convicted of and served jail time for lying to investigators. Trump's personal attorney and so-called fixer, Michael Cohen, was convicted of multiple crimes earlier this year. Most significantly, he pled guilty to campaign finance violations in which he used Trump campaign funds for a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels in order to keep her quiet about her affair with Trump. Cohen is now in prison. Notably, Trump is considered to be an unindicted co-conspirator in this case and could likely face charges when he leaves office. Trump's longtime friend and personal confidant, Roger Stone, was recently found guilty on all seven crimes he was accused of committing, including lying to Congress, tampering with a witness, and obstructing a congressional investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election, all in the name of protecting Trump from further scrutiny. Stone now faces a maximum sentence of 50 years. Instead of surrounding himself with only the best and most serious people, Trump has surrounded himself with criminals, running his administration like a mob boss. That being said, not everyone in the Trump administration is a crook and a liar. Over the course of the impeachment hearings, the American public has seen firsthand the patriotism and dedication of career public servants testifying in the impeachment inquiry. So what do Trump and his enablers have to say about them? Former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, has a decorated career in foreign service spanning 33 years, including service in multiple countries and in highly dangerous situations. During her testimony, Trump tweeted that, quote, everywhere Marie Ivanovich went turned bad, unquote. And then he blamed her for a civil war in Somalia that started before she was even posted there. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman is a decorated Iraq war veteran with a Purple Heart. During his testimony, the official White House Twitter account tweeted out a direct attack on him saying Vindman's former boss had concerns about his judgment. Previously, after Vindman testified behind closed doors, Fox News launched a series of attacks against him, accusing him of having dual loyalties. Uh, we also know he was born in the Soviet Union, emigrated with his family, young. Uh, he tends to uh, feel simpatico with the Ukraine. Here we have a U.S. national security official who is advising Ukraine while working inside the White House, apparently against the president's interest, and usually they spoke in English. Isn't that kind of an interesting angle on this story? I, I find that astounding, and you know, some people might call that espionage. Vindman's fellow witness, Jennifer Williams, a veteran foreign service officer and national security aide to Vice President Pence, who listened in real time to Trump's July 25th telephone call with Ukraine President Zelensky and called it inappropriate, had barely left the hearing room when the White House issued a statement challenging her credibility. Even before she appeared, Trump called her a never-Trumper who should work out a better presidential attack. Ms. Williams, are you a never-Trumper? I'm not sure I know an official definition of a never-Trumper. Would you describe I, yourself that way? I, I would not, no. When Marie Ivanovich's testimony concluded, 
Donald Trump Jr. took to Twitter to attack her and the previous two witnesses, acting ambassador to Ukraine William B. Taylor Jr. and top State Department official George Kent as, quote, career government bureaucrats and nothing more. And in the same tweet, he claimed that America hired Donald Trump to fire people like the first three witnesses we've seen. When David Holmes, a top aide to the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, told lawmakers that he heard Trump ask Ambassador Gordon Sondland whether Zelensky is, quote, going to do the investigation, unquote, Trump tweeted that it's impossible to hear a private phone conversation. The president's voice was loud and recognizable. Ambassador Sondland held the phone away from his ear for a period of time, presumably because of the loud volume. Trump and his enablers have launched attacks on these honorable career diplomats because they can't fathom that anyone would put America over their own personal interests and follow their conscience to do what is right. To Trump and his enablers, disloyalty to Trump is a cardinal sin, and anyone who dares stand up to him is a traitor. The contrast between the dedicated public servants protecting America's interests and the Trump toadies trying to protect Trump's interests could not be starker. The laundry list of convictions and guilty pleas should serve as a warning to those who still pledge their loyalty to Donald Trump rather than to the United States. When you serve a man who operates with lies, deceit, and corruption, he will bring you down.